So I want to speak on spiritual mixture this afternoon. Now, mixture, when we speak about mixture, mixture is that which has been produced by what? Mixing. So you grab two elements, you grab two substances, right? And you mix them together and you get another form. So we see, for example, smoke and fog become what? Smog. Yeah. Dirt and, and water become what? Mud. So when you mix those two ingredients, right, or substances or elements, you get a different form. So what happens? When you and I got born again, we received the seed of the word, correct? Christ came into us with no mixture. It was just the word itself and Jesus himself came in, not mixed with something else. So we were born again without a mixture, and we are to remain in the walk of God without mixture. And God's people said, now, so our Christian faith is not to be mixed with other faiths. The doctrine of Christ is not to be mixed with other doctrines. It's to remain pure, it's to remain holy, it's to remain uh, not divided. Now, if you go to Revelation chapter 2, so we see when God calls us to walk walked with him, uh, there's to be no mixture. Like once we were delivered from the world, we were translated to the kingdom of God. We went from darkness to light. The kingdom that you and I serve is a kingdom of light. Say, I have received a kingdom of light. All right, so we came out of Egypt where there was darkness, and now we're in this new kingdom, and in this kingdom, what reigns is light. What reigns is love, for God is love, and God is light. So there can be no mixture between what? Light and what? Okay, so the church cannot be mixed with the world. And when I say the world, I'm talking about the world system, the world's mentality. What they practice and what they do. What you once did before. Hallelujah. How many came out of the world? All of us. We all came out of the world. We all practice sin and we're doing some crazy things. But once you received Jesus, he cleansed you and transferred you to his kingdom. Now, in Revelation chapter 2, we see that Jesus is speaking through the angel to the apostle John. Now, John begins to uh, see the future, and John begins to speak what he sees. The angel said, write what you see. So this happened after the resurrection. Jesus had already been in heaven for 30, 40 years when John received this revelation. And the Lord appears to John in this vision, and John is in the island of Patmos, and he begins to write. So Revelation chapter 2, God has a message for seven churches. How many churches? Now, those were seven historical churches that actually existed, correct? But this message to the seven churches is applicable to any generation. For that word is still alive and still speaking to us, the church, the body of Christ. So we see in Revelation chapter 2, we see in verse 12, the Lord begins to speak to the church of Pergamos, and he has a warning for them. And in verse 14, he says, but I have a few things against you, because you have there those who hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to put a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed to idols, and to commit sexual immorality. Verse 15, thus you also have those who hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. And verse 16 says, repent or else I will come to you quickly and fight against them with the sword of my mouth. Okay, so what is Jesus telling the church of Pergamos? He's saying, hey guys, I have this against you. You're holding the doctrine of Balaam and you're holding the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. What was the doctrine? That doctrine was that they were teaching the people to do what? Eat sacrifice, things sacrificed to idols and to commit sexual immorality. That was the doctrine. Balaam was a prophet in the Old Testament. But this prophet will prophesy when the Spirit of God will come upon him. He will prophesy for God. But at the same time, this prophet operated with sorcery. He was a mixture. He had a mixture in his prophetic ministry. When the Spirit of God will come upon him, he prophesied the word of the Lord. But when he tapped into sorcery, 
and divination and witchcraft, he, pra- he, he prophesied not under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. So we see that we can prophesy either by the Spirit or through divination, through sorcery. Do you guys understand that? So the prophet lived a mixed life, a mixture in his life. And we see that this man was told by King Balak. You know, King Balak was the king of Moab. King Balak hired him and said, listen, I want you to curse Israel. He gave him money. He was offering him a lot of money, a diviner's fee, they call it. He was offering him money. He said, I want you to curse these people. And when Balaam, the prophet Balaam, tried to do it, it couldn't work. Hallelujah. Because God's people are blessed already. And you cannot curse what God has blessed. And God's people say, no witch, no divination, no sorcery can curse a bad woman of God. Now, if you're not under the blood, if you're not walking in the spirit, then those things can come on you. But if you walk in the spirit, you're free from that. And God's people said, all right. So he tried to curse them. He said, I can't. I can't curse what God has blessed. God has blessed and he can't reverse it. So what am I saying? This Balaam lived the mixed life. He's the one that rode the donkey. Remember, the donkey prophesied to him instead of him prophesying to the donkey. Because he was a blind, a blind prophet. Because when you walk in sin and the word, you get blinded spiritually. Yeah. And the prophet couldn't. Prophets are supposed to see and prophets are supposed to hear. But when you walk mixed, you can't see and you can't hear. The donkey ends up hearing and seeing better than he does. So anyway, so we see here that Balaam lived the mixed life. So of course, what's going to happen? He's going to have a mixed doctrine. A mixed belief system. And this was what's happening in the church of Pergamos. They were teaching the doctrine of Balaam, teaching the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. And Jesus said, these things I hate. Jesus hates false doctrines. Because it seduces the people of God. And it lures the people of God where? Into idolatry. And sexual immorality. And all other sins. And the sin of Israel, as you know, was idolatry. That's why they were defeated. Sometimes they won. Every time they walked with God, they had victory. Every time they rebelled against God, they lost. Is that teaching you and I a lesson? When we walk in obedience, we what? Win. When we walk in disobedience, we what? Lose. That's simple. Everyone say ABC. That's simple. So the rebellious always pay a price because they walk in disobedience. So we see here, Jesus hated that doctrine. And we see in chapter 2, verse um, 20, he's talking to the church of Tyre, Tyra. And what is he saying to the church of Tyre, Tyra? This is another church. He says, nevertheless, I have a few things against you because you allow that woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants to commit sexual immorality and eat things sacrificed to idols. So here we see in the church of Tyre, Tyra, the same thing was happening. Church of Pergamos, the doctrines of Balaam, the doctrines of Nicolaitans, and now the doctrine of Jezebel. And you guys know who Jezebel is. Jezebel was the wife of King Ahab in the Old Testament. And she did what? Practiced Baalism. She practiced witchcraft. And she influenced her husband and the nation of Israel to commit idolatry. And God took care of her later on. But what I'm saying is, this is a woman that actually existed historically. But we see that this spirit is still on the earth. The spirit of Jezebel, we call it. Why? Because it seduces the people of God and brings them into idolatry. The spirit of Jezebel likes to control and and, and, and manipulate people. So this spirit is still here. And Jesus is addressing this woman named Jezebel. That was her physical name. She was they were actually a woman named Jezebel in the church of Tyra. And she was what? She was a self-appointed prophetess. It says she called herself a prophetess. The church did not recognize her as a prophet. She said, I'm a prophetess. You ain't a prophetess, nothing if God has not called you. You can call yourself whatever you want, but if you're not God ordained or God appointed, then you're self-appointed. And the anointing is not on you. And God's people said, 
There's a lot of self-appointed people that are arising in these last days and will continue to arise. False prophets will come. That's what the Bible says. So what am I saying? She was teaching and seducing my servants to commit sexual immorality and eat things sacrificed to idols. The same thing that the doctrine of Balaam was doing and the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. And what does John, 2 John chapter 1, verse 9, I'm going to just read it to you. 2 John 1, 9, 1, 9 says, Whoever transgresses and does not abide in the doctrine of Christ does not have God. He who abides in the doctrine of, of Christ has both the Father and the Son. So we are to do what? Abide in the doctrine of Christ. Not the doctrine of Balaam, not the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, not the doctrine of Jezebel, or any other doctrine. You are a believer. We have faith in Christ, and we are to be established in the doctrine of Christ, the teachings of Christ. And God's people said, yeah, we are to hold fast the doctrine of Jesus. In the last days, with these great deceptions taking place and will continue to take place, what happened? What the enemy wants is a mixture. If he can't get you to deny completely and abandon the faith, I'll just mix it. I'll just have a little of the doctrine of Christ and a little of another doctrine and mix the thing. And you and I have to be careful. We cannot allow a doctrine that opposes the word. We must keep the doctrine of Christ Jesus. And God's people said... That's what happened with Israel. They were worshiping other gods, foreign gods. God gave them his law to his people. But what happened? They started dealing with foreign gods, the gods of the Gentiles. And they began to learn their ways. And then do what? Mix it into their faith. But we must keep our faith pure and clean and undefiled. And God's people said in 1 Corinthians 10, 16, it says the cup of blessing which we bless. Is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? When we partake of communion, what are we doing? We are partaking of the life of Jesus. Communion means kononia. Everyone say kononia. In the Greek, it means fellowship. It means sharing together. It means participating with. There's seven meanings to it. When we partake of communion, what are we doing? The life of Christ is being imparted on the inside of me. Hallelujah. We don't do it just for, for religious reasons. We do it because there's a communion taking place. Communion means intimacy. Husband and wife, you know that? Intimacy, that's what's going on when we have communion. It's an intimacy between Jesus and us. Hallelujah. And the Holy Ghost. Now, but Paul's saying this. When we partake, we're communing with the body of Jesus and the blood of Jesus, the life of Jesus. Now, check this out. He begins to tell them about idolatry. He's basically saying, if someone invites you to go eat, you eat what's placed before you. But if they tell you this was sacrificed to this demon God or this God, don't eat it. More for their sake, because you're good. You can eat whatever you want. Hallelujah. You bless it, it's sanctified. But for their conscience sake, don't do it. Because then they think that you're joining in in their idolatry. And you cannot serve two gods. So we see here, Paul is telling them, stay away from those things. Look at what he says in verse 20. Rather, the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to who? Demons and not to God. And I do not want you to have fellowship with who? Demons. Who are, are we to have fellowship with? God, with Jesus. When we partake of communion, who are we fellowshipping with? Jesus. When we partake of this sacrifice to false gods, we're fellowshipping communion with demons. No mixture. Verse 21, you cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the Lord's table and the table of demons. Are you with me? No mixture. Everyone say no mixture. Not the cup of the Lord and not the cup of demons. So that's what the Apostle Paul is warning the church. John warned the church also of idolatry. Because you can start right, but doesn't mean you're going to end right. We have to continually follow Jesus. When Jesus said, follow me, he didn't mean one time. It's to follow him forever, for the rest of your life. And we must protect ourselves from this mixture. That's Psalms 106, verse 35. They mingle with the Gentiles and learn their works. They serve their idols, which became what? A snare to them. They even sacrifice their sons and their daughters to who? Demons. You see that? So this mingling, this mingling causes us to do what? 
serve their gods, causes us to, to even sacrifice their sons and daughters. They begin to sacrifice their children because that's what those false religions were doing. They will bring the sacrifice. Why? Because their demon gods demand blood. Hello? Their demon gods demand blood. Everyone, anyone ever seen the movie Apocalypto? It was a movie made by Mel Gibson. And you see about these uh, back in the days with, the, with, with certain tribes. Yeah, they sacrifice children. They sacrifice people. Why? Because their gods demand blood. But our God gave his blood. Right? Their gods, we demand blood. In Christianity, God says, I will die for you. I will give my own blood for you. What a difference. What a difference. Their God demands your children and God sent his own son for you. Their religion, you have to give up your children. Our faith, God gave up his own son. Hallelujah. Big, 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 huge difference. Don't even compare the faith in the things of God in Christ Jesus compared to other religions. So here we see that they, they, caused, they began to sacrifice the idols. Now, in Leviticus chapter 18, I know I'm going through the scriptures, but that's good for you. Amen? Leviticus chapter 18, verse 1. It says, Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, I am the Lord your God. According to the doings of the land of Egypt, where you dwelt, you shall not do. He's saying, don't do what they did or what they were used to do when you lived in Egypt. And according to the doings of the land of Canaan, which where I'm bringing you, you shall not do, nor shall you walk in their ordinances. Verse 4, you shall observe my judgments and keep my ordinance to walk in them. I am the Lord your God. So what is God instructing Israel there and still instructing us? Don't do the doings of Egypt. Don't do the doings of Canaan. Don't practice what they practice. Don't go trying to learn their ways. Listen, we're the church. We're the light of the world. The Bible says the body of Christ is the pillars of truth. If people want to know truth, who you think they have to come to? They have to come to the Word, but which people do they have to come to? The people of God. Why? Because the Holy Spirit illuminates the Word to us and gives us truth. And we declare truth to the world. We declare truth to the nations. We don't go to the nations to go get truth. They have to come to the body of Christ to come get truth. Are you with me? Don't mingle with them. Don't learn their ways. That's what the Lord is warning us. Don't do what they do. You do what I tell you to do, not what they do. Now, in verse 20, look at this. Moreover, you shall not lie carnally with your neighbor's wife to defile yourself with her. What is that? Adultery, correct? You shall not let any of your descendants pass through the fire to Molech, meaning the sacrificing the kids. Nor shall you profane the name of the Lord. I am the Lord. Verse 22, you shall not lie with a male as with a woman. It is an abomination. What is that called? Verse 22, homosexuality. Verse 23, nor shall you mate with an animal to defile yourself with it, nor shall any woman stand before an animal to mate with it. It is perversion. What is a, a person sleeping with an animal? It's called bestiality. God is saying, you don't do those things. The nations do that. The Gentiles do that. The wicked do that. Not you. You're my people. You're holy. Holy means to be set apart. Holy doesn't mean I wear only pants. That women only can't wear pants and, and no makeup. That's not what makes you holy. It's, it's your, your heart, your character, the way you act, the way you talk. Not the way you dress. People think that you dress all night, that you're holy. That will make you holy. My God. Now, you should dress modestly, of course. But that's not what causes you to be holy. Hallelujah. Now, so over here, bestiality. I did a teaching. What does the Bible say about bestiality? Remember I did that a while ago last year? I got, so, I got like almost 4,000, almost 4,000 views. I said, why are people watch, why are they watching this particular three-minute clip about bestiality? There are people looking up bestiality. Hello? Sleeping with, I, I, I talked about the blood. I talk about powerful things. I don't get that many views. I talk about bestiality, pff, over 3,000. With beast, for bestiality, people are searching the word bestiality. There are people now that are sleeping with animals right now. You think this is just an Old Testament thing. They're doing it now. Hello? God warns us. He calls it, it's, it is a perversion. Perversion means confusion. 
It says, verse 24, do not defile yourselves with any of these things. What things? Sexual immorality, homosexuality, bestiality, all these sins. Do not defile yourself with any of these things. For by all these, the nations are what? Defiled. The nations are unclean because of the things that they're practicing, which I am casting out before you. Verse 25, for the land is defiled. So not only is the nations, the people defiled, the land itself has become defiled. Because the moment you shed innocent blood on the land, the land becomes defiled. It brings plagues. It brings judgment. Why? Innocent blood has been shed. When Cain killed his brother Abel, what did he say? Your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Innocent blood was crying out for justice. When you begin practicing and walking in sin, it complicates your life. Your life is all over the place. But thank God you come to Christ and Christ fix you up. You could be all twisted and complex. It's okay. Jesus will fix you up, but you got to do it his way. Not your way. Your way don't work. Look at your life. You do it God's way. Hallelujah. I say you do it God's way. Well, I don't believe in that. That's your problem. Then stay twisted and crooked. That's simple. I mean, I don't have no problem with these things. I read the word, believe it, and then that's it. It's established. Hallelujah. I don't care what people's opinions, what their opinions are. It's what the word says. What does God say? Not interested in being politically correct, only interested in being biblically correct. I'm Democrat, I'm Republican, I don't, I'm a Christian. We, we, we're, we're on a higher level here. I'm not talking about in a prideful way. We are the kingdom of God. We're above all the politics stuff. We serve a king, not a president. The president, you got to vote him in, vote him out. The king, forever. When the king declares a word, it's law. You don't have to go through Congress or the House of Representatives. When God says something, it's established. Hallelujah. I say when God says something, it's established and it's truth. That's it. It's that simple. We're people of truth. We have to be lovers of truth. How many lovers of truth I have here? You have to love truth. And when it comes to loving truth, you have to love truth above yourself. Because if not, you're going to compromise truth. Because the truth is not fitting into your lifestyle. So now you have to mix this. Don't mix the word. Don't mix the word. You're the one that's all messed up and mixed. The word is good. The word works. The word will always work. The word will always work. We do not fix God. God fixes us. We do not change God. God changes us. Are you with me? You are not called to change God. God will never change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, you're not the same yesterday, today, for you change. You're going through a metamorphosis process for the good. Hallelujah. For the good. God has got you in that metamorphosis process. You're in the potter's house. And he's working on that clay. Sometimes that clay is disobedient. He grabs it and throws it up against the wall. And pulls one piece off. That hurts. It's going to hurt sometimes. Man, God is really beating me up, working on me. Yeah, I'm working on you. Because he's trying to transform you into something glorious. Into the image of Christ. God is transforming you into the image of Christ. People have models and they have, uh, how you say, uh, when you look up to somebody, what was that, an idol? And the, idol, that's the problem. Idols, get the thing out. All right, praise God. No adultery. No fornication, no homosexuality, no bestiality. Those things defile the nation and defile the land. You're not going to be able to change, thus says the Lord. This was written before you were even born. And when you die, it's still going to be there. You are going to come and go. The word don't come and go. The word stays. It's established forever. So we have to be people of the word. I know we have loved ones, we have friends that disagree. Okay, it's your problem. This is the word. I have family members that don't, don't agree with what I say. That's your problem. Hallelujah. I believe the word. You don't believe it? That's your problem. If you get your life right, you'll come in agreement. 
The problem is you're living a life of sin, so you compromise in this word. Listen, don't play with the devil. You compromise, you compromise. The devil is not a little kitten. His name is not Heathcliff or Garfield. He's real. The devil's real, and the devil will destroy you. The only reason he hasn't destroyed you is because Christ is on your life. Without Jesus, he'll tear you up. He's like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He'll tear you up without the presence of God. He'll destroy you. You can only challenge the enemy in the name of Jesus. With Christ in you and Christ upon you. Apart from Christ, he'll destroy you. Your, your prey, your meat, he'll tear you up. But we can't compromise these things. Now, Numbers chapter 25, verse 1. And Israel remained in Achaia Grove. And the people began to commit harlotry with the women of Moab. They invited the people to the sacrifice of their gods. And the people ate and bowed down to their gods. And then verse 3 says that God was angry with the people of God. Why? Because look what they're doing. They're committing fornication, adultery, harlotry. What's idolatry? The worship of idols. Worshiping something outside of God. That's idolatry. What's immorality? Fornication. Sex outside of marriage. Not popular nowadays. By the time, can I just say it? Or should I hold stuff back? Okay, I'll just hold it back. You guys don't want to hear. Oh, okay. By the time someone is 15, they've been with like 10 guys. Hello? That's immorality, fornication, sex outside of marriage. Why you think people are so messed up in their heads now? People are all mixed up. Why? A miksha. When you lie with someone, it's not just a physical act. It's an importation. It's a soul tie. It's a mixture. The things that are in the soul of that person is now on you too. Then I sleep with this one. Now that's on me too. I, I go through five, six, seven, whatever. All that mixture. And no wonder you're all troubled in your mind. No wonder there's so much turmoil on the inside of you because of this mixture. So it's just it's not, it's not a one-night stand. My friend, that one-night stand could be a death. Are you with me? So what I'm saying is this miksha, messing around. I'm telling you right now, if you, <laughs> people that, 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 you, that you may see, that you know, that been around, watch. They're not right sound in their mind. You see, there's always, they're always all messed up in their mind because they've been all over the place. and They got all these soul ties. Now, if you were like that in the past, that's the past. The blood erases it. It's gone, okay? We're not here for condemnation, but that's the past. But what I'm saying is, it is a principle of miksha that's forbidden in the scripture. And it affects your life. It's an exchange of souls, like I said. Spirit, soul, and body when you sleep with someone. So that's immorality. Number three, adultery is what? Sex with someone that's married. That's adultery. Everybody knows that. And number four, harlotry. That's physical and spiritual prostitution. So we have these four things. Idolatry, immorality, adultery, harlotry. And all these things are no good for you. All these things are, are sin. And the wages of sin is why? The wages of sin is why? The wages of sin is why? It's death. Every time we practice sin, sin pays us back with death. Not only physical death when we drop dead, just everything around us starts dying. Are you with me? The blessing of God is not there. Because we open up the doors as a Christian. As an unbeliever, I'm not talking about, I'm talking about the body of Christ. John was talking to the church in Revelations. God here is talking to the church. He's talking to his people. Why? Because he loves you. Why? He cares for you. Why? He wants the best for you. God knows you do this is going to open up the door to demonic, the demonic powers of Satan. Sin positions you for devils to come in. And there are Christian people who are demon possessed. There are peop Christian people who have devils on the inside of them, spirits on the inside of them. Some of them don't even know they have spirits on the inside of them. And that's sad and that's a shame. But nowadays there's churches, you see demons being cast out, out of believers. The same people that were singing a moment ago, devils are coming out of them the next moment. Why? What is going on? The Bible says who the sun sets free is free, correct? So what is the world is going on here? You know what? Miksha. You're mixing, and you open up the door to the demonic, and you open up the door to these spirits to come in. Let's stand up to our feet. We'll continue next week in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Let's give the Lord a big, big hand clap of praise. Amen.